Welcome to Math 1041, which is Statistics for Life and Social Science at UNSW. These slides have been written by three people, Pierre Lafaye de Michaud, Jacob Stoclosa, and myself. So my name is Laure Elmeguizon. I'm a lecturer here at UNSW because my name is a bit hard to pronounce. Some students call me Laure and others call me Dr. H because of the H at the beginning of my name. The first topic we'll be studying here is called study design. And so we'll start by an introduction of how you collect and organize your data. Of course, before you can uh, analyze data, you need to have it organized in some way. So this is the learning outcomes. And that's what you will be using at the end of the section to just review that you've seen everything. So probably you'll see, OK, do I understand this and this and this? And you will be ticking. So for now, I'm going to skip it. So last year, we collected some data from UNSW students taking Math 1041, and we asked them a number of questions. How many hours they sleep, their mode of transport, how happy they were with UNSW, etc. And if you look at the result, the result looked like that. It was a really big five, a big table. They were, uh, so here it's just 60 rows, but really there were 400. Uh, at that time and then there were all these columns and each of them correspond to one of the questions we asked. So if you just look at that, it's not possible for the human brain to get a picture of what goes on. So that's just data. So our goal will be to go from data, this type of big table, to information. So you can see right away that we will need to have some way to summarize what happens. So roughly speaking, like in the table we just saw, data are just a bunch of numbers. And in our case, they were organized in a CSV file. It's a little bit like an Excel file. CSV means comma separated values. In the case of the previous file, there were 408 rows and 30 columns. It was already too big for our brain to get the big picture. And that's much, much smaller than the type of data set that we, you can have in other situations. Just think of uh, the amount of information your phone will be collecting every day on whatever you do. The goal of statistics is to turn data into information. Let's now look at an example. It's called an investigation because we're going to use this example for you to discover which are the important concepts. It works much better than if I actually tell you. So the question we want to answer is, is Mass 1041 a good course? And I'm asking you, what's the population we're studying? And what data needs to be collected? So for this to be useful, you really need to pause the video, pick out a piece of paper, and start writing down what population you're studying in that case and what data you would collect. If, as you're doing that, some doubts come, this is exactly what we need, and that's going to help you understand how, in the future, we will need to do that. So please pause the video now. Let's now all come back together. Well, maybe you realize that the question, is Mass 1041 a good course? It's, the question is too vague. So the way you would answer the question, the population you're going to choose and the data you collect depend on what you mean by that. For example, if what you're interested in is whether students actually enjoy the course, then you would want to know that for all possible students who ever took the course, and that would be the population. And the data you would collect about them, it could be through my experience survey, which actually just measures your experience, not really how much you'll learn, but whether you were happy during the course and you liked it. Or you could design your own survey, and then the question would, you would ask to students is, did you enjoy the course? Now, you could read this question totally differently. You could say, is Math 1041 a good course? Means, does it prepare students well for the future? If they need to use stats in, in the future, were they prepared? In that case, you would pick a different population. The people you're interested in are the ones who not only took Mass 1041, but also had to use statistics after that. So you would restrict your population compared to the previous case. And then the question you would ask them would be totally different. You would ask them, did you feel prepared? Did you have the, lo the knowledge you needed? So what we discover here is that the population of interest 
and the data you collect depend on the research question. So it's important that you carefully think about what really you're trying to do, what question you're really trying to answer, because that's going to be guiding all the rest. Don't start collecting data and waste time and money just to realize that it's not exactly what you need. And in case some people want basically a written summary of what I just said, they can look at this slide and maybe you want to pause to be able to look at it carefully. So now we can see the steps involved in the statistical analysis. So you think really hard of your research question and you decide what data you need to collect. Once you know that, you still need to collect it correctly in a smart way. So we'll, that's what we will be discussing in this chapter, how to design an experiment. Sometimes you also do some computer simulation and we will we'll also see, see that a little bit later. Once you have your data, you need to organize it. It used to be in paper notebook, but it no longer is done this way. We put it in files, in databases. And the idea is that one day we'll be able to maybe even store it on DNA for long-term storage. Once you have all this data, this bunch of numbers, you try to describe it to see, see a pattern, get a feeling of what's going on. And um, so that's why we will be using descriptive statistics. This is something that may overlap with things you've done in high school. And then from what you have, we will try to really prove that there, is, there are some relationship between variable and that will be part of statistical inference. We collected a small sample and we want to be able to say something about the whole population, although we can't see it entirely. And, but if you collected it the right way, it's possible. And basically, we will be doing all of that in Mass 1041 and statistical inference is going to be a very big part of that course. As I move on to the next slide, you can see that here it says reference notes. So when you see things like that, it means that there are things, there are revisions, things you maybe already know, or things you will look at in your own time. But we still wanted to include them to save you the work of having to do some research. Also, it turns out that in statistics, there are, there are a lot of things around on the web and not all, all of them are correct because basically anyone can post anything. So we thought it would be good for you to have everything you need to know on this slide. These are, this is why there are so many of them, but we won't necessarily cover everything in class. So in particular, these are definitions which we can uh, read later on. I'm going to explain them on an example. So here is my example. So the Tasmanian devil, that's a carnivorous marsupial. It was once everywhere in mainland Australia, and now in the wild you only find it on the, in Tasmania. And we think that the reason it disappeared is the dingoes, basically the wild dog, and there are none in, in Tasmania. Since 1990, the Tasmanian devil got this disease, which is called devil fascia tumor disease. And as you can see, it's really, really bad, and this has drastically reduced the population, and now it became endangered. So that's the story, and we want to use that story. I mean, it's a real story, of course, and we want to use this to learn some vocabulary. So in that case, we are interested in knowing what's happening to the whole population of Tasmanian devil, so that's the population of interest. Now, every individual in this population is going to be called a case, right? So basically, a case is an individual in a population. The population could be anything you're interested in. In a different story, let's say uh, you measure the nails that come out of a factory, and in that case, your population will be the set of all nails that came out of this factory, and a case, an individual, would be one nail. So the researcher captures 30 specimens in the wild. So this group of 30 Specimen is going to be called a sample. It's a subset of the population. And then for each of them, she labels them and call them specimen one, specimen two. And we say that these are the IDs or the labels. Because she's interested in knowing how the disease progresses, she records the weights, the presence or absence of the disease for each individual, how sick they are, so that's the severity of the disease. One male, they're not very sick and five, they're really sick, so the disease is extremely severe. And then finally, she records the location where the animal was captured. So in that case, uh, the weight, presence or absence of the disease, severity, and all that, they call the variable. In that case, she records four things, 
on every specimen. So this four is the number of variables, and the variables are each of those. So that would be uh, variable number one would be the weight, variable number two, presence or absence of the disease, variable number three, the severity of the disease, so that would be three, and the location would be your variable number four. So the sample is this set of 30 individual, and the sample size is how many individuals there are in the samples, how many cases, and in that case, there are 30. So make sure you know those words. So either you can read that, or you could maybe go back to this previous slide and make sure you do this carefully, because we're going to be playing a game to check that you actually know all those words. So because this is a pre-recorded video, you, we cannot play as a class. So what we're going to do, I'm going to be playing the game with um, pretend students, and we can do that in Kahoot. And what I would like you to do is play at the same time, because it forces you to think, you get the excitement, you wonder, you really want to know. And if you get it wrong, then you say, ah, oh, it's going to help you remember. The colors are going to be red, green, uh, yellow, and blue. And so you just write this down. Question one, I'm answering blue and so on. So let's play in parallel. So before we can play, uh, I need to tell you what the story is. So that's going to be a Kahoot, which is going to be related to that story. So the question we have is that we want to determine if the average amount of sleep and the average amount of physical activity that students have impact the final marks for UNSW first year students. So to do so, we have asked 100 students out of the 11,000 UNSW first year students to indicate how many hours they sleep per night on average and how many hours they exercise per week. And then this data was stored in a file and students have been identified by the ZID. Okay, you pull out this piece of paper you are ready to write question one and write the corresponding color, and I start the game. First question, what's the population? So pick one of these colors and write that on your piece of paper. I will always be answering red as in order not to give any indications. So the population is the group of students you want to study. The whole group. Sometimes you cannot look at all of them because it would be too time consuming or too complicated, but that's really what you want to study. That's what the population is. Next question. So the sample is a subset of the population. So because you can't look at the whole population very often, you're going to take a subspace, a sample, and look at those. So in our story, the sample is this 100 students you will be surveying. It sounds like the previous question, but it's different. I changed my mind, I'm not answering at all, in fact. So the sample size is, as you expect, the size of your sample. So we had a sample with 100 people, so the sample size is 100. The sample size of the population size will always be numbers. What are the variables? Please write it down or it's going to be boring. Uh, 
Okay, so a little bit like with si uh, sample and sample size, the variable, it's not true. It's what you're looking at, what you're actually looking at. So you're interested in the amount of sleep and in the amount of physical activity. So these are your two variables. Not doing very well. Last question, the number of variables. Write it down. It's better to write and get it wrong than to do nothing. So the number of variable was two because you, you're looking at amount of sleep and amount of physical activity, and that is two. So hopefully this Kahoot has helped you uh, nail down those definitions. So when we say data set, we also sometimes referring to a computer file where the data has been stored, and we can do this using different formats. So the most usual one is the one we will see in this course. So I'll start with the ones you probably know, like the Excel ones, which are a common way of storing uh, data. This is CSV, comma separated value, is if you like a simpler version of Excel, we will use that a lot. And also, although it may seem surprising to you, txt, which is text file. So we use all of those to store data, which then we can analyze and treat. We sometimes also use, sorry, ODS, which is basically the free version of Excel from op Open Office. And an example of data we've stored in the past, we have asked the 1041 student to answer a survey, and we've stored the results in a file with extension R data. R because we're going to be using a software called R a lot to produce the examples in this course. So for example, we will have histograms or a box plot or analysis, which are using the real data we collected during this survey.